Look at this sky. Listen to those birds. My friends, okay, I'm super excited to show you something in the woods today. Maybe it's crazy that I can get this excited about a plant, but this is an amazing discovery and I cannot wait to show it to you. Here it is in one stage, it's just a weird looking little thing. And here it is a little further along. These are the first clues because there's that central little knob and then it looks like maybe some leaves coming out around it. Okay, this is it. Oh, this is wow, look at this. A beautiful, beautiful plant. And you can see down below, this is that little bud it was coming up from. And these are gonna fold out and be I have a circle of leaves on the top. It seems that there's the singles that don't have a flower and then the doubles, this is going to be two umbrellas, have those flower heads that are coming forth. Okay, I'd better tell you why I'm so excited about this plant. This comes from my childhood because I grew up a little bit further south in Wisconsin. And now that we've moved into southern Wisconsin, I'm recognizing, well, basically a lot of old friends. This plant is one of them. I never knew this plant's properties or edibility or anything else. All I knew is that it had a name of American mandrake. And when I researched it a little bit, this again is as a kid, I learned that there was a plant called European mandrake just mandrake. And that plant was used in the magical folk traditions of Europe. It was considered a really powerful plant and so magical that if you pulled it up, its root, the root was kind of man-shaped, human-shaped. <laughs> they believe there were male and female, some look like men, some like women, uh, plants. But in any case, they would pull up this root and it would scream. It would make this sound that was so powerful that it would either drive you mad or it would kill you. So the people harvesting this plant would have all these strange methods to try to get the plant up without hearing that scream and losing your life. Now it turns out that this plant called American Mandrake, when the people came over from Europe that practiced these traditions, they considered this plant to be the equivalent, so they used it for the same purposes. And that was just really cool to me. It made it sound, well, magical, I guess. And it's always had this aura of enchantment around it for me. But now, many years later, I'm often teaching wild edibles. This plant has become a really important one in that teaching process because you hear that drip sound? Okay, we always call it the drippy bird. It's not really a drippy bird. Let's see if he'll talk for us. Back to the mandrake. All right, so now teaching wild edibles, this plant becomes really important when you're taking people out into the woods because the question people inevitably have about this plant or that plant or that plant is, is it poisonous or is it edible? And if you're familiar with well, plants in general and wild plants in particular, you'll know that there isn't a clean dividing line. All plants are gonna have some bioactive compounds and something as good for us as blueberries, if eaten 
to an extreme is going to give you, for instance, diarrhea with blueberries. So there's not this clear line, but these guys really illustrate it very clearly. And incidentally, I should say maybe not these guys, but this guy, girl, <laughs> because these are clones in these colonies. These are all genetically the same plants back here, which is kind of cool. All right. So these plants are extremely toxic, probably one of our most toxic woodland plants. The leaves, the stems, and the unripe fruit, mm -mm, you do not want to eat those. However, when that fruit ripens, then the toxic constituents are degraded, they're no longer present, and what you have is, to me, perhaps the most delicious fruit not just wild fruit, but fruit <laughs> that I've ever tasted. And I really do love watermelons. But these guys are incredible. The only thing I can compare them to are the lilikoi or the passion fruit that we harvested in Hawaii. They have a very strongly tropical flavor, which seems almost out of place in the Wisconsin woodlands. And the flavor and the aroma is so strong that I have been walking on a path 10, 20 paces behind a friend who is eating one of these. And the smell will be so rich that it feels like I'm eating a fruit myself, even though I'm not. Sometimes I'll take one of these home and take a bite out of it. And whether you're living in a teepee or a yurt or a house or a shelter, it fills up that space with this incredible aroma that anybody that smells it says, what is that? Now this autumn, I am very hopeful that I can show you this ripe fruit and eat some with you and kind of get to experience it here in a video. But it's not guaranteed, even though the woods we're finding here are filled with these. The reason is that they are not really fond of putting out their fruits. And when they do produce fruits, often those fruits fall to the ground before they ripen. And if they do ripen, then everybody in the woodland, the deer and the raccoons and everybody smells them and says, I want some of that. The deer especially love them. And those fruits will disappear very, very quickly. I'm going to try to be on top of it this year and hopefully harvest some with you. Now, it's only natural in this video, I think, that I pose the question, what is your favorite, I'm going to say wild food, because maybe it's trout out of the stream. What is your favorite wild food? For me, somebody asked me that the other day, and that is a really difficult question. But these guys, these fruit on the mayapple, on the American mandrake, is so incredible that it is definitely way up there on the top of my list. So I would love to know what is up on the top of your list of favorite wild edible foods. All right, my friends, thanks for sharing my excitement with this one. Oh, I, I don't know why I go so crazy over this plant, but I just love them. I cannot wait to talk with you down in the comments and hear about your favorite. Check this out. Mirabelle made a little cage. This is the path. And so she made this little protective cage around these guys so that nobody steps on them. What a sweet girl. <laughs>